What's up, my Yugi Bros? I am your host, the one, the only, the RJB Zero. Welcome to Casual Friday. Today, I did remember the soda. I am going to be trying out Izzy Sparkling Blackberry. I'm a big fan of blackberries and blackberry-flavored things, and I figured since I found one that is in soda form, I might as well try that for today. And the other thing is, since I did open a Kaiba tin last time, it would be unfair to the king of games if I did not also open a Yugi tin. This time, I'm going to be doing it at the end of the video, so let's get down to the Q and A. Let's start with Ghost Trick Knight, who says, what are your thoughts on the Cyber Angel archetype? I'm not a big fan mostly because it gives people an excuse to run Herald, and I absolutely, absolutely hate Herald of Perfection. Other than that, it's a, it's a decent archetype, especially once Vishnu comes out. I see it continuing to be a decent rogue deck in the format, and that's pretty much all of my opinion on it. This seems like it's going to be a big episode for the what do you think of my favorite deck questions. Next is Destroyer831642. That's quite a long number at the end of your name. Destroyer must be fairly popular. Destroyer asks, so what's your opinion on the current state of Super Heavy Samurais? Uh, they, I, they look like they're fun to play. Personally, I don't think getting steamrolled is that much fun, though. They just don't have the utility power to get anywhere. They can't put out big boards. They can't make beaters with protection. They just can't keep up with the current state of the game. They might have been decent four or five years ago, but as of now, they're, they're just underwhelming. Destroyer also asks, what is your favorite Dimension Dragon? Clear Wing Synchro, Dark Rebellion Xyz, Odd Eyes Pendulum, and Starve Venom Fusion. I personally like Clear Wing Synchro because I'm a Synchro fan. Uh, of them, though, it seems like Odd Eyes has been the most versatile, which is pretty cool, and also includes a Synchro of its own. Uh, so I would say the best one is Odd Eyes Pendulum, although I am partial to Synchro cards. One Fire Up The says, Hey, I heard you were a dancer. My question is, what type of dancing do you do? My friend and I were debating between stripping and ballet. I do not... Uh, 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 stripping and ballet. That's quite a dichotomy of tiers of society right there. Uh, I do social dances largely. My personal favorite is... Uh, is fusion, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically where people get together and combine other social dances. Uh, it doesn't really have its own basic form. It's a kind of a language for communicating between different social dances. Uh, and I also do Cuban and L.A. Salsa, Bachata, Zouk, uh, and I am just getting into West Coast Swing. X0737 asks, what is your favorite extra deck monster? You must be new to this channel. Does this answer your question? Henry Jones asks, feelings on Cliffords this format? I think Cliffords kind of are what they are right now. They're either a two card combo for Pendulum, or they are a way of making Demise into a deck that can actually put down power cards. Other than that, Cliffort just does not have the power it used to have, and it's mostly just because it's a f generally inconsistent deck now. He says, I'm also curious when you think we'll get another list, and if Demise will be on it. Demise will likely be on it, as will Pot of Desires. As for when it comes out, I could not possibly tell you. It's probably going to be between three and four months after the last one, uh, or if it turns out the Tree Toad just totally destroys the format. Cody Jenkins also asks about Card of Demise and uh, which deck I personally think that it works best with. Uh, I would say that Barrier Statues do really well with it, uh, and also pretty much any deck that utilizes mostly trap cards and things like that. For instance, Paleozoic can do well with it. Um... I think Satellar Knights are kind of okay with it. Mostly, I think you have to either be willing to lose cards during the end phase or be able to put all of your cards on the board in the first place in order for Demise to be a usable card. Cody Jenkins also asks, in addition to my previous question, what do you think are some of the best non-Floodgate trap cards in the format besides the obvious Solemn Strike? Uh... Besides Solemn Strike, pretty much all of the cards that are good this format are Floodgate cards. Uh, Rippling Mirror Force is really powerful, but you have to be playing it in a deck that is not likely to have monsters on the board when your opponent makes a big push. Um, and I also think, ironically, Floodgate Trap Hole is very, very good this format. My roommates are apparently watching one of my videos. <laughs> 
Oh, Alex is apparently stalking me on YouTube. This is gonna be awkward. Humble Sir asked my question is, what do you predict the best deck of the format to be? Do you think Cyber Angels have a chance of squeaking in? I've already talked about Cyber Angels, but as for what I think the best deck of the format is likely to be, uh, it's fairly unclear to me right now. Metal Foes is incredibly powerful. I think it's the best deck of the format as of right now. Once ABCs come out and Tree Toad comes out, uh, that's going to be a little less clear. I don't think Tree Toad is going to be as game-breaking as people seem to think it is. It's, don't get me wrong, an incredibly good card, and it's going to make a lot of decks that weren't particularly good really good, and a lot of decks that were okay really good. But I think the format is liable to mostly have the same hierarchy it does now with a few bump-ups for things like Heroes. Sorry about the weird sudden change in angle and quality. My iPod, which I have been filming on for the last, like, three years, is suddenly dying. You got this. Let's see. <laughs> Alex is encouraging me. Shot out Shot asks, Are you sure you are the only, the one, the RJB0? Is it possible that you might not be? First of all, it is the one, the only, the RJB0. Get it right if you're going to do it. Uh, and actually, funny thing, I keep running into this this guy who calls himself just the RJB, no zero, and it's kind of annoying uh, because like every time somebody Google's me, they end up with this guy, and it's so it's 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 been quite a trip having this guy around. But I am the one, the only, the RJB zero, even if I'm not the only, the RJB. Infinity Alpha 8 asks, thoughts on the spiral archetype and where do you think the deck may be headed in terms of competitive viability? I think it's headed into the trash. I think it had a lot of opportunities to be fairly decent as a deck. Uh, and I also, I just realized that I had this soda and now I am struggling to open it. Anyway, I think that it just has not seen the kind of support that it really needs. Spiral Super Agent is super cool, but like other than that, it's nothing to... It's, it's nothing too impressive. The Divergency asks, first question, uh, have you seen the Yang Zing and Fluffle support coming out? Yeah, I think the Yang Zings are pretty good. I think Fluffles are eh. Uh, and second, thoughts on Ultimaya. I think it's a good card. I think some decks can abuse it. Um, it's very powerful. It, it's a big resource. I don't really have a huge opinion on it. David Lombardi asks, have you seen the new Spirit support? Uh, if you have, I was wondering what you thought of it, and if you think it could have some potential down the road. Eh, I don't think Spirits are any better now with the new support than they were before, uh, but Konami is totally free to prove me wrong on that. I just think that they're going to be playing the resource game and losing it far too often. David Amp asks, do you or would you play the one upstart? Yes. I generally do play the one upstart when it comes to combo-based decks just because I want to increase the likelihood that I receive a certain set of cards in my hand, uh, and the smaller the deck I have, the better that likelihood. And since life points don't make a huge amount of difference in a fast format, I would rather have the consistency and have my opponent start with 9,000 life points while I start with 39 cards in my deck uh, than start in a different way. Yu Gi Old says, throw in an opinion on gardening and you have the most diverse channel in the Yu Gi Oh! Uberverse. <laughs> Vexy likes my robe. Uh, Simo asks me with a little wink, will you be attending YCS Anaheim? We've been talking about this a lot. He's been trying to convince me to go, and I cannot. I am a very, very busy college student and also not a particularly. I mean, I. I I don't have a huge amount of money at my disposal, and I especially don't have a huge amount of time at my disposal. So I don't get to go to very many competitive events. By the way, this is very, very good. I'm supposed to be reviewing this at some point. I really like this soda. It is not too sweet. It's fairly tart. Uh, the blackberry flavor is a little disappointingly, like, un-blackberry-y, but blackberry e whatever. Uh, and, but, but I am quite enjoying it. Accelerator 1 asks, since you were talking about voting in your new video, who are you voting for? Alex! Should I tell my subscribers who I'm voting for? He doesn't know. This is a moral dilemma. I mostly just really don't want to start a political thing uh, on my YouTube channel, except getting people to vote in general. Uh, this is not an argument that I particularly feel like having here. Um, however, I have very, very strong opinion on the subject, despite really not liking having to have the opinion that I have. Um, I 
Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm voting for Clinton. Uh, and the reason is, this is this is a fairly political science-y reason. Um, there are obviously, she has obvious flaws, um, but when it comes to the executive branch of the government, it is particularly important that somebody who has a lot of experience, who is familiar with the mechanics of the job, um, be in the position because they have a lot of power over foreign policy uh, and over hiring, uh, but they don't really have a huge amount of power despite a lot of political capital be beyond that. Really, their job uh, in terms of legislation is to give, to give power to a piece of legislation that's going through Congress uh, and to go public. That means talking to the public about legislation, talking to them about candidates, things like that. I think Hillary Clinton is very good at what she does in terms of foreign policy. I think that uh, she had some major screw-ups that she shouldn't have, but the thing is there has never been a Secretary of State that oversaw the job without some tragedy happening on their watch, without some failure, because the thing is foreign policy is incredibly complex, uh, and we almost never get it right. Um, despite our best efforts, and I think that we should have our best efforts anyway. So I think in terms of foreign policy, we should have somebody who's very, very experienced. Uh, and the thing is, I think that a person who is competent in the executive branch, which I think she is much more than Donald Trump, mostly because of experience and also because of temperament, uh, because of uh, connections with allies, things like that, it is, it is very important that in the executive branch, we have somebody who's very, very good at the job, even if I disagree with their policies in a lot of ways, because a, a, a executive who does not know what they're doing, who does a very, very explicitly poor job, uh, makes state and local legislation really, really difficult to pass. So in terms of just the policies that I want to get done at the state and local level, in terms of Congress, I would much rather have Hillary Clinton in the White House than I would Donald Trump feel free to disagree with me in the comment section. Like I said, I really don't want this to be a political channel, but I was asked, uh, and I think that that's an important opinion to get out there, because I think a lot of people have this kind of lesser of two evils means it's there's no point in voting kind of mentality, and I think that that is a problem, uh, because when you don't vote, you're essentially voting, because everybody who stayed home who has this thought like, one, well, we might as well, I don't want to give power to the lesser of two evils, first of all, n doesn't take away from the power of the uh, of the two evils, so to speak. Uh, and second of all, that, that mentality just uh, means that a lot of people who have the ability, who have the power, because we live in a, in a constitutional republic who has the power to make a difference in their government, ends up not making a difference in the government. And that means that the people who are already in power stay in power, and the few make decisions for the many when the many have the power to make the decisions for themselves. So that's the only reason why I'm bringing this up. I'd like to move along, though. YG Otali asks, what are your thoughts on heraldic beasts? Uh, they had their time. They're a very, they have the ability to recycle a ton and recur monsters a ton and get Xyz monsters on the board very, very easily. Um, but they lose at the resource game so quickly um, that I just don't think that they are liable to be competitive in the near future. And finally, Geranium Battle asks, what happened to the Packers swag that you had in your previously final videos? Um, I have never been a Packers fan. Um, in fact, that was all of my roommate swag. I have since moved out of that particular apartment uh, and have moved into a new one. So I do not have Packers swag of any sort of my own. My only sport is baseball, and I'm a Cubs fan. Geranium Battle also asks, are you still a judge? Are you going through the process of becoming a judge again? I am still a judge. I should probably take my RC1 test again, though. So there you go. That is the q and I am sorry if I missed your question. There were a couple that I looked over because they seemed similar to the other ones. Uh, but if you have a question that you want to ask me, of course, ask in the comment section below, and I will get to it if I can on the next Casual Friday. Now, let's get to that opening. Alrighty, here we go with that pro opening setup, which is the computer laptop camera setup to be viewing angled downward. I'm truly a professional. I'm great at this Yugi tubing thing.
I've actually never been particularly high-tech when it came to Yugi tubing. I told uh, the next great Yugi tuber that I had an HD camera, but it was really just my iPod that I carried around outside all the time. I'm mostly, I, I, I put enough, I put enough money into this game that I feel like putting that much money into my Yugi tubing, uh, when, like, visuals are not exactly my main thing, just seems a little bit excessive. Alright, let's open this. All this plastic stuff that I'm gonna throw away. I'm so good for the environment. Cool. I know you have all seen all of these promos like a million times before, but I always think opening promo packs is cool because I usually only get product that includes promos uh, when I think the promos themselves are really exciting. There's that beautiful original art Slifer. That Yugi starter deck magician. Uh, that the, the, the dark magician that we all grew up with, uh, except for those of us who are very, very new to the game, with, of course, that larger picture due to the new card formatting. I think that's very beautiful. Also, it's an ultra, which I like. Here we have an ultra Ebenheim magician, which isn't exactly as good as the spirit dragon that you got in the Kaiba tin. That's part of why the Kaiba tin is more popular, uh, but it is very pretty. I like ultras, like I've said before. Here we go, the DDD Jengis. This card is actually very, very good in the DDD deck, which I am considering making because it looks like a whole lot of fun. And then we get yet another card that I've never read before, Dragnox the Empowered Warrior. When an opponent's monster glares at an attack, you can destroy this card, then, add the then end the battle phase. Once per turn, you can discard one card, then target one warrior spell to uh, cast your type. The I am so amazing at reading cards today. Spellcaster type monster with 2,000 or less attack in your graveyard. Special summon it in face down defense position. That seems like it is usable. Um, I don't know how used it is. And then, of course, the Performer Pal Pendulum Sorcerer, a card that I may use in the near future just because Pendulum decks look like fun. Alrighty, let's get to these mega packs. Kaiju Capture Mission. I have never actually read that card. Let's return if there are less than three kaiju counters on this card. You can target one kaiju monster on the field, change it to face down defense position, then place one kaiju counter on this card. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, you can draw two cards. Uh, you can only use the effect of kaiju capture mission once per turn. Huh. It seems like it would be kind of fun with twin twisters running around. This seems like a kind of interesting way to troll your opponent. The engraver of the mark. Is that a perform a pal card? I, I can tell even from not being able to read it. It is a perform age card. Flame Eater. Super Heavy Samurai. Did I just get two of the same Super Heavy Samurai card in a row? No, I didn't. Okay. Raptor's Gust. It's a Raid Raptor card. Ding, here we have a Kaiju card. That's pretty exciting. I always like Kaijus. And for my first holo, I get... A Gaia the Fierce, or a Charging Gaia the Fierce Knight. This is an ultra that people seem to pull a lot. It seems that Konami has messed with the ratios to make certain less desirable cards more common. That's That seems very Konami of them. And for my very first secret, we have a Jar of Avarice. That is not bad. That is a, that is a card that I foresee people using uh, in particularly mill heavy decks or particularly combo heavy decks where you go through a lot of cards in your deck uh, and want to be able to reuse them. I don't know if it's particularly applicable right now, but I think that it has a future. And for our super rare, we have another Galaxy Full Armor Photon Dragon. That is a very good card. Uh, Bird of Paradise Lost. That's a pretty damn sick looking card. Look at this thing. It's like post-apocalyptic here. It's a level 8 tuner. That's pretty sick. And it allows you to take your opponent's monsters. That seems like it has the potential for abuse at one in some deck or another. Uh, and then perform a pal, Salute Tiger, and whatever the hell this is, Backup Rider, and a Dynamist, and Pot of the Forbidden. I don't remember what the application I've seen for this card was, but I definitely have seen it used. I'm going to separate out them hollows and rares. You know, the funny thing is I get these hoping that I'm going to get a Solemn Strike, but, like, if I actually just bought a Solemn Strike, it would be kind of a comparable price to my buying all these Megatons. Mostly it's for entertainment value. It's kind of like playing the lottery. It's exciting to know what you might get. We've got Wizard Buster Destruction Sword for that Buster Blader deck. 
Super Soldier Rebirth. Getting another Black Luster Soldier Trap card soon. Another Common Synchro. It used to be that, like, Common Synchros trolled you all the time because you thought that they were going to be something good because Synchros back in the day were always something good. And we've got Destruction Sword Flash. What the hell is this? Karma of the Destruction Swords. Yet another Buster Blader card. I am really ripping those Buster Bladers. Toon Dr Barrel Dragon? Dear God, what have they done to this poor thing? All right, and for our next Ultra Rare... Oh, Bunbuku, that is not bad. That is a card that is fairly nice to pull. Uh, I have, for a long time, kind of wanted to play Magispectors, uh, and so this may be telling me something. And for our Secret Rare, we have an Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. That's not a bad card. I've seen this being played a couple of times. Um, I remember it being fairly good. I don't remember much about it. I will read it later. And for the Super Rare Brilliant Fusion, yet another fairly decent pull from this pack. I am real happy with this particular pack. Brilliant Fusion is a very, very good card. And then Super Heavy Samurai, Trick Box, Commons, Deskbot Jet. Fluffle Sheep. All right, for the final pack, will it continue the escalation of the last pack? Or will it be as disappointing as the first one? We'll see. As soon as I can figure out how to get the damn thing out there. More Ignites. I saw an Ignite deck actually top recently, although, like I've said before, I think that they've basically gotten overshadowed by the existence of Metal Foes. Bubble Barrier. Extinction on schedule? Sorry, I just looked at this card. Konami's really fond of making really awful versions of old good cards. Her form of how cards are so weird. A Dino Mist, and for our first rare, though, I lied. For our next rare, that wouldn't have been even been our first rare. I'm really bad at this. And we have, for our rare, Trapeze Magician. That's, that's all right. I'm okay with that as a rare. And for our next altar, we have, oh, a Neptibus. <laughs> Of all the things I definitely needed. Okay, and for the last secret, we have... A Synchro that Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. That's pretty darn good. I am A-OK -okay with the existence of that card. Kaboom! And our last one is we have Utopia Prime as our last super. We had another card that I don't... Why does it have 2510 attack? What the hell? Huh? Abyss Stung Ray. We've got Psychic Blade. And I have no idea how that card is supposed to be pronounced, but it's a worm tuner. And then all of these cards. So that is my opening, and that is Casual Friday. Things I have coming for you in the future. Since my iPod just died in the middle of the making of this video, uh, it is unclear how I'm going to be making my videos in the future. Um, <laughs> I am going to make them, though. I'm going to be talking a lot about skill in the near future, um, because that is a very important topic to me, and I think that we as a community need to have a bit of a wake-up call when it comes to skill and becoming better at the game. And I also have a few top tens I am ready to work with, plus a really exciting project that I have that I will show you tomorrow. Meanwhile, thank you all for watching. I am your host, the one, the only, the RJB Zero, and I got a jet. See you guys.